Praise the Lord, everybody. We certainly do thank and praise the Lord for another day's journey. And we thank and praise the Lord for how he's been good to each and every one of us. Truly, we can say this is the day that the Lord has made and let us rejoice and be glad in it. And we want to welcome you to another edition of our e-service, our Bible study. Uh, welcome to Christian Ministries of the Apostolic Faith Church, wherein I am the lead pastor, uh, Suffolk and Bishop-elect Pastor Frankie L. Quinn. And we certainly do thank and uh, praise God for my lovely wife, Lady Tracy Quinn, and the staff here at Christian Ministries, and also the members of Christian Ministries of the Apostolic Faith Church. Uh, we're located in Erie, Pennsylvania, uh, 501 West 31st Street, Erie, PA 16508. And uh, we certainly do thank and praise the Lord. Uh, it's a great day uh, in the city on today. A little brisk, a little chilly, but nonetheless, if you dress warm, you'll be able to make it. So we do certainly thank God as people are uh, tuning in uh, with us for our uh, weekly Bible study. And uh, certainly we do thank God for his word. The scripture says his word is able to build us up and give us that inheritance that is among them that are sanctified. Thank you, Lord. So we thank God for his word. And we thank God for all you all that are tuning in, uh, wanting to hear the word. Scripture says, as the deer panteth after the water brook, so panteth my soul after thee, O God. Uh, do we have anybody out there today that's thirsty and hungry uh, for the word of God? The Bible says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. In the book of Psalms 119, it says, his word is a light unto my path and a lamp unto my feet. And he said, how shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed thereto according to thy word? So as we get ready to go into the word on today, we certainly do want to praise God once again and, and give glory unto him for he's worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be praised from the rising of the sun until the going down of the same. Uh, we certainly do want to pray for men and women and children everywhere that the Lord will continue to save and add to the church daily, such as should be saved. Let us pray for our, uh, our workers and um, those that are in the medical profession and those that are on the front lines and, and the grocery stores and all areas and everything, so that the Lord's protection would be upon us. And let us remember uh, the book of uh, Chronicles, where it says, if my people, that are called by my name, that they would just humble themselves and pray, seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. He said, then will I hear from heaven, I'll forgive their sins and heal their land. That's the status that we're in on today. God is, he wants us to humble ourselves. This Corona virus is not from God. It's man-made in my opinion. And um, so let us pray, let us pray that uh, the hand of God uh, would be continued upon us and protect us uh, from danger seen and unseen. God is still in control. He's still on the throne. Uh, gracious Father, in the name of Jesus, we certainly do thank you, Lord, for this grace and mercy that you have allowed us to enjoy. We ask you, Lord, that you bless our hearts and our minds and our spirit on today as we receive with meekness the engrafted word of God to the saving of our souls. Bless each and every request that's been made known, sent forth your word on tonight, send clarity of thought and speech in the name of Jesus. Let your Holy Ghost, let it empower us, let it strengthen us for the hour, for the task and the assignment ahead. Grant ears to hear the engrafted word of God to the saving of our souls and bless on every hand. We pray in Jesus' name, amen and amen. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord. I want you to uh, virtually, literally, Turn with me to the book of Ephesians, the book of Ephesians, uh, chapter number six, the book of Ephesians, chapter number six. And uh, tonight I want to talk to you uh, uh, primarily about 
uh, putting on the whole armor of God. But I want to talk to you tonight about being strong, about being strong in the Lord, about being strong in the Lord. And it's important for us uh, to be strong in the Lord. It's important for us to understand about the armor of God, putting on the whole armor of God. And I want to talk to you tonight about that because it's essential with our walk with the Lord. We've been talking in our Bible studies about enduring to the end, enduring to the end. He that endureth to the end, the same shall be saved. And that endurance, uh, we need that. We need that in order to remain, to last, to stay. So if you just go with me uh, to uh, the book of Ephesians chapter number six. And I want to begin reading at verse number 10. Ephesians chapter number six and verse number 10. And Paul says something that's very critical um, in this particular epistle. He wrote to the church at Ephesus. And uh, he had said, verse number 10, it says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. I want to read that again because that's going to be our foundational scripture for tonight. He says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. So we see there, there are a couple clauses that are there. And it's just us here on, on tonight. I'm going to read that again. He says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And in this particular epistle, Paul was encouraging uh, them. He had given them very uh, various, uh, how can I say it? I don't want to say encouragements, but he was giving them various things to do, assignments to do, loving their children, how the, how the parents are to love the children, how the children are to respond to the parents. And then he was telling them how to live a certain kind of way and how to treat uh, those that God had put under their authority. And so that's why he was saying, finally, my brethren, uh, my last admonition, that's the word I want to use, my, lad, my last admonition to you concerning everything that I had previously said, he said, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And what he was saying there, he was, uh, you know, when we think about uh, uh, the word of God, when we think about uh, what God requires of us, God often, he often advises his, his saints or his, his people to be strong, to be strong for various reasons. God, uh, in the book of uh, Joshua, uh, it starts out telling Joshua to be strong and, and a very uh, good courage. Even in the book of Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy chapter 31, God tells his people to be strong, be strong. And even in the book of Timothy, Paul uh, cautions his Timothy to be strong, be strong. God wants his people to be strong. And that's for various reasons. You know, we are encouraged to do good things. And in, in order to do good things, we have to be strong. And we are encouraged by God to live holy. And if we're going to live holy, we have to be strong. We are encouraged. Uh, sometimes we have to say yes, we have to say no to certain things that are unpopular. Uh, and in order to do that, take a stand, you have to be in various situations in life. When you're pressed against various situations in life, uh, you have to be strong. When, when, when the pressures of life come upon you, uh, you have to be strong. And uh, when you need to uh, humble yourself, uh, you have to be strong in order to humble yourself. When you need to be bold, when you need to be courageous, 
you have to be strong. And then talking to your children and, and disciplining them and, and um, uh, not taking down from a standard, you have to be strong. When faced with the enemy or faced with certain evils that want to come upon you and come your way, uh, the scripture tells us we have to be strong. When you want to resist the devil, uh, steadfast, you've got to be strong. So there's various reasons why the Lord tells us that we have to be strong. And uh, life, life itself, life itself, when we're talking about life, and uh, the success of life depends on you making the right decisions. And in order to make the right decisions in life, you have to be strong. You, uh, you have to take a stand. And, you know, our decisions that we make, uh, if we make the wrong decision, it can be costly. Uh, a a one-night stand can end up in a pregnancy and you're paying child for support for 18 years. Uh, so that can be costly. Uh, marrying the wrong person, doing, uh, having a, a, a difficult marriage, you know, that can be costly. You know, uh, uh, getting drunk and, and drinking and driving and things such as that, you know, uh, can end a person in jail. So uh, I'm saying that to say all of this is that you have to be wise and you have to be strong in order to uh, resist temptation, to resist things that would come upon you that could lead you in the wrong direction. Life, I said earlier, is a series of choices and God wants you to make the right choice. If you're gonna have success in life, you've got to make the right choices. Uh, I'm gonna say this, my God, that that uh, a, a Christian life, uh, a person that uh, lives for God has to have uh, God's theology within them. In other words, they have to live by God's doctrine, the doctrine of the Lord, have his principles and have his morals, have, have God's way of thinking within them, his theology. And, and if you're going to be a, a child of God and live by his principles, then you know that whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. And um, that could go two ways. If you sow good, you're going to reap in a bountiful way. If you sow evil or wicked, then you'll reap in a negative way. And anybody that knows that, 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 that God, his theology, they have to live according to God's word in order to reap the benefit. And if you don't live according to the word of God, you won't reap the promise of the benefit. Uh, a person that doesn't live according to the word of God and, and live as God's word does command, you cannot expect God to treat you in a blessed way. Thank you, Lord. That's, that's my point. People who live a lifestyle uh, expecting that, uh, uh, and their lifestyle is not a good lifestyle, but still expect God's blessing upon their lives, they're really deceiving themselves. They're deceiving themselves, and that's a bad choice. But to, but to have a strong focus and realize that, that, that if I want to be blessed by God, I have to live according to his word, that's a good focus, that's a good choice. So Paul is saying then in the book of Ephesians, when we look at the book of Ephesians, uh, chapter number six and verse number 10, I'm just laying a foundation here, just bear with me. Um, we also fight uh, against internal forces and external forces that that, that, that weigh bearing on our choices. And that's why we have to be strong because even the apostle Paul says, uh, when I want to do good, evil is always there with me. It's present. He said that in Romans chapter number seven. Uh, so he, in the end, he concluded 
uh, in Romans chapter number eight, thanks be to God that giveth us the victory through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He realized that when, when he wanted to do good, there were some evil forces that were trying to bring him into captivity. Uh, I'm going to say this, there, we are all controlled by a spirit, uh, either by my human spirit, your human spirit, or you're controlled by an evil spirit, or you're controlled by a holy spirit. You're controlled by some type of spirit. And, and, and I said that to say that, that you've got to understand that uh, your human spirit has a proclivity to do that which is evil. And the devil, uh, he wants to help you to do that which is evil. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. But God, God, who is rich in mercy, hallelujah, wherewith he have loved us, he wants us to do right all the time. And in order for us to make the right decision all the time, we need some supernatural power. We need some power that is uh, beyond our own strength, beyond our own might. And that's what Paul was saying. Be strong in the Lord. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. In other words, it's impossible for an individual to, to live a holy lifestyle and make the right decisions uh, without the supernatural power of God upon their life. It's impossible for an individual to live a consistent lifestyle of holiness and righteousness, uh, that which God requires, without a supernatural power, without supernatural deliverance upon their lives. It's impossible. So that's why Paul says when he concluded uh, uh, Ephesians chapter number six, he said, finally, my brethren. In other words, I know that I have given you some information that may seem hard. I've given you some assignments and told you to do certain things that may seem difficult. But finally, my brethren, notice, he said, be strong in the Lord. Take on this supernatural power of God. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Now notice what he said. He said, be strong. That word be there. Tell you, I'm going to take my time here tonight. That word be there, it, it's, it's a passive tense and it has a, of an ongoing and a lasting effect of, of, of being in the presence of the God, being in the presence of God, enjoying his power. In other words, it, it, it is, that word be is a, a, a positive tense, it's, and it means to be in the presence of the Lord always, all going, in any, at any state, at any time. You're, you're being strong. You're being empowered by God throughout your life, throughout your day. And it's, and it's an ongoing process. And, and having said that, I want to say this before I, it, it, it leaves my mind, that what we're going to talk about today is a lifestyle for a servant of God. It's not just something that you do uh, uh, when you want to be strong, you do it. And then when you want to be uh, not strong, you don't do it. It's an ongoing process. It's a conviction. It's, it's living the crucified life. The, it's a lifestyle. Thank you, Lord. In order to build yourself up on your most holy faith, you've got to make this a lifestyle. Thank you, Jesus, because once an individual stops in their attempt of, of being strong and walking with God, they, they backslide. They, they, they turn away from God and they become weak. Uh, anybody knows that if you're uh, training, if you're exercising, if you exercise a week straight, you're going to be strong. If you stop exercising a week, you're going to be weaker. Amen. So, so God wants you and I want you to, to, to grasp this process 
as an ongoing process of building yourself up. Hallelujah. By being in the presence of the Lord, receiving of his supernatural power all the time, living in the presence of the Lord. That's what Paul meant when he said, walk worthy of the vocation of the Lord. That walk means live in an environment that's worthy of your assignment that God has given you. Walk worthy of the vocation that God has given you. In other words, you live in, a, in an environment that's conducive to holiness, that's conducive to righteousness, that's conducive to receiving of the power of God. Amen? So um, notice what he said. He said, finally, my brethren, uh, be strong, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. That word strong there, it means to literally be empowered, to be empowered. Thank you, Lord. That word strength means to literally be empowered by God, to be empowered by God. Be strong in the Lord, be empowered by the Lord. And in other words, it means to be a recipient of God's power. And the beauty of that statement is, let me say that again, be a recipient of God's power. And the, the beauty of that statement is that God has created us and he has designed us to be recipients of his power. Hallelujah. God has designed us and created us to be recipients of his grace, of his power, of his strength, of his might. Thank you, Lord. We were created uh, to receive of God's strength. We were created to receive of God's power. Hallelujah. We were created to be strong in the Lord, to, re to receive the strength or to be empowered by God. Hallelujah. That's why the scripture tells us, he says, let your light shine before men that they may see your good works, that they may glorify your father, which is in heaven. Thank you, Lord. Uh, 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 when we, when we are, are operating uh, in the strength or in the might or in the empowerment of God, we receive God's strength to be able to do supernatural things because uh, the things that God requires us is supernatural. Uh, in other words, I want to say it like this, that, that, that God in all of his wisdom and, and knowledge and understanding, when he called us, the Bible talks about our calling as being a high calling. Thank you, Lord. A great calling. Paul says, press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God, which is in Christ Jesus. And the calling that God has placed upon our lives, it requires some supernatural power in order to live it. Thank you, Lord. A saint is called to a higher level of living than a person that does not know God, that does not trust in God. And, and God has deposited all that we need, all of this power in Christ Jesus. It's in one place, and that one place is in Christ Jesus. That's why Paul said, in him, I live, I move, and have my being. It's all in Christ Jesus. So that's why he said, press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God, which is in Christ Jesus. And, and everything we need is in Jesus. In him I live. In him I move. In him I have my being. And salvation and deliverance and strength and forgiveness, everything you need, power, honor, might, blessings, grace and mercy, peace, everything you need, Hallelujah is in Christ Jesus and God has made it possible for us to tap into him. Hallelujah to receive this supernatural strength to be strong, be strong, be strong in the Lord. Not in your own might, not in your own strength. You won't be able to do it. Yeah, you may stop lying for a moment. Hallelujah. But when the pressure gets upon you just right. 
And if you're trying to do it on your own strength, you'll slip up and tell some lies. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. If, if the pressure is upon you and things upon you just right in your own strength, you'll give in. You'll fall by the wayside. But when you are infused by God's power, God, if you're infused by God's empowerment, hallelujah, you're able then to do the supernatural. The older saints say, my, when I, my, my, my soul looks back in wonder how I got over. <laughs> hallelujah, my God. So notice, notice what he says. He says, finally, my brethren, be strong, a present, a passive present tense, be strong in the Lord, which means an ongoing process. God wants you to be strong in him in an ongoing process. Not a, not a, not a here a little, there a little, not a stop in and out. Uh, he wants you to continue, amen, to continue in him to be strong. Jesus put it this way. Uh, he said, uh, I'm the vine, my father's, in the hus my father's the husband man, every branch that's in me bringeth forth fruit. Then he said down, down further in that chapter, abide in me uh, and my, my words abide in you. That word abide means to remain, to stay. Thank you, Lord, to remain, to stay. Thank you, Lord. That's what that word be means, to abide, to stay. Thank you, Lord. Now, notice, he said, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Uh, now, that word power there, uh, I'm getting a little ahead of myself, but I'll come back to it. That word power there, it, it means um, literally having a demonstration of, of God's ability uh, in your life. It means literally to demonstrate God's uh, ability in your life. In other words, it literally has a, a natural connotation to it where people could see the power of God operating through you. Uh, it's like how when Jesus got up from the grave, you saw power. Uh, when Lazarus got up from the grave, you saw power. Uh, when, when Jesus laid hands uh, 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 on people and, and they got healed, they got delivered, that was power. Hallelujah. It's like uh, if you were uh, uh, turning off your TV uh, uh, or turning on your TV, you hit the power button and you expect something to happen. Same way with your walk with the Lord, what the Lord is saying here. He's saying, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. You expect, God expects something to happen in your life when you're being strong in him. He expects mountains to move. He, he expects people to be healed. He expects people to be delivered. He expects you to overcome the wicked one. He expects you uh, to overcome uh, any evil thought, any evil deed. He, he, and he wants to see it manifested in your life. That's what that word right there, power, is. And it has another connotation to it, uh, which means to be in God's dominion. That word power also means to, to be in God's dominion. Hallelujah. Exuding his power in your life. Hallelujah. My God. When anybody say for a good preacher, he preaches a good sermon. That, that's a demonstration of the power of God. Hallelujah. When, when a good teacher teaches a good Bible class, that's a demonstration of the power of God. When, when I resist the devil, hallelujah, when I resist temptation, that's a, that's a demonstration of the power of God. Hallelujah. And God wants to see that. My God. God wants you to manifest that. Now notice, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Now that, that word might there means, uh, uh, it means there's a, there's a comic book character called Captain Atlas and he's a strong individual. Thank you, Lord. And, 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 and it's styled as, well, he's not bringing that up. It's that when we're dealing with God, you, you being strong in the power of his might, meaning that God is strong, that God is, God is, God is mighty. It'd be like, 
Uh, you see, you've been around individuals, go to a gym, you see them lifting 500 pounds, and, and they, they walk around all swole up. Thank you, Lord. My God, you look at them, you say, man, they strong. Hallelujah. And that's the, the thought pattern God wants you to have in your mind about him, that God is mighty, that God is strong, that he's able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that you're able to ask or think, uh, that, that, that God has never lost a battle. Hallelujah, that he's able to do it. He's able to move mountains. He's able to do whatever is necessary for you to get victory in your life. God is by you. He said, I'll never leave you. God, glory, and I'll never forsake you. Thank you, Lord. That's what that scripture means. Thank you, Lord, that verse. Now, I want to move, I'm going to move on. Thank you, Jesus, my God. Be strong in the Lord. And in the power of his might. And once again, we have been designed. Uh, we've been designed to receive this power. And this power comes to us through his spirit, through God's spirit. That's why God wants to put his spirit in you. Uh, the Bible says ye shall receive power. That word power there means dudamus. Like dynamite, explosive. <laughs> Hallelujah. God wants you to be like dynamite, explosive. Hallelujah. He says, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. The scripture says, ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Amen. So, so in order to walk in this type of power that I'm talking about tonight, you have to be infused with the Holy Ghost or with the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is given unto you. You don't have to work for the Holy Spirit. You don't, you don't have to act up and clown and, and be a fool to receive the Holy Spirit. All you got to do is ask him. Make a change. You say, Lord, I want to make a change in my life. Lord, I want to I wanna live better. Thank you, Lord. And God will give you the precious gift of the Holy Spirit. It's, he said he, he, he wants to give it to you. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And all you got to do is ask. Hallelujah. And you're designed to receive it. And a couple manifestations that come along with the Holy Spirit is the, uh, the, the speaking in unknown languages as the Spirit of God gives the utterance. And also a turn and a change to be a witness unto the Lord. Then it's also some, 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 some things that go along with it. You receive joy. You receive peace. You receive an infusion of faith and, and hope toward God. And then you receive an infusion of wanting to walk with God. And in the power of his might, your appetite changes. You, you, you no longer desire evil things, but you want to de desire holy things and righteous things. Thank you. I can go on and on about uh, the manifestation of the spirit in your life. But tonight we're talking about the manifestation of the spirit in your life that gives you power. Amen. You need power. Thank you, Lord. Don't fool yourself. Not, not just any kind of power. You need God's power. You need a supernatural power in order to walk with the Lord. Hallelujah. So we see here then, um, um, when we talk about God and then being in the power of his might, in order to perform all of these duties, we need the Lord's strength. Amen. I want to be very clear here. You need, we need the Lord's strength in order to perform the duties uh, that he wants us to do. Not just any kind of strength, his dynamic inner strength. Thank you, Lord, that only comes through God and through his spirit, through the Holy Ghost, dwelling on the inside. Thank you, Lord. And, 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 and that strength that God gives you, it empowers you. Hallelujah. It empowers you to be able to, to, to accomplish what God would have you to accomplish. Now, I'm going to say this, that um, uh, I was uh, uh, 
I was doing a Bible study at one time and the individual was bringing up the doctrine, once saved, always saved. And uh, in that particular doctrine, he was saying that, well, you can do anything you want, um, but as long as you have accepted the Lord Jesus in your life, it's impossible for you to be a backslider because you're always saved. You can never lose out on salvation. Uh, but the Bible does not teach that. The Bible does not teach that. If it did teach that, it wouldn't tell you to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. It wouldn't tell you to resist the devil steadfast. Amen. And I could bring up a whole lot of other scriptures. Thank you, Lord, that it wouldn't tell you to do. It wouldn't tell you to love and, 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 and treat people right. Uh, uh, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't have a hell that would not have been enlarged. Thank you, Lord, for, for those that, 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 that were going to be disobedient and not walk worthy of this vocation. So there's a difference. Thank you, Lord. And, and my point in bringing that up is, is that, is that you need this power in order to walk worthy of the vocation where God has called you. You need to, you need this power to manifest God's ways in your life. You need it. Hallelujah. That's why Paul said, finally, my brethren, be strong. Be strong in the Lord. Be empowered by the Lord and, uh, and, and in the power of his might. Now, so I want to say this then. So let, he's saying, let the strength of God be yours. In other words, you are designed to receive of God's power. Thank you, Lord. You were, you were made, hallelujah, to receive God's strength. You were made to receive God's anointing. You were made to receive God's grace. Because when God designed you and made you, he knew that the only way that you're going to be able to accomplish his purpose and his will, he has to help you. Amen. God has to help us. Hallelujah. Paul said, having obtained help from the Lord, I continue unto this day. Jesus, the Bible in the book of Hebrews, it says, now come boldly to the throne of grace that you might obtain mercy and find help in the time of need, in the time of trouble. Thank you, Lord. And that word come boldly means come with confidence. It, it doesn't mean that you have to be saved to come to the throne of grace. A sinner, he said, a sinner just got through committing adultery, fornication, smoking a blood. He telling them, come boldly. If you want to change your life, thank you, Lord, come boldly to the throne of grace. <laughs> Hallelujah, my God. I'm getting excited here. Hallelujah, because salvation is not complicated. Hallelujah. Deliverance is not complicated. It's just based on your faith in Jesus and wanting to turn and, and go a different way. Hallelujah. Live a different lifestyle. Hallelujah. And that's what God has for you. So, so, so he says, come boldly to the throne of grace. Now, Paul says this. He says, uh, let me move on in the scriptures here. I kind of got ahead of myself. I'm getting excited. Uh, no, he said, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Notice verse number 11. He says, put on, put on. Now you do something. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Notice what he said. He said, put on the whole armor of God. Amen. It is God's armor that, that supplies the strength. It is God's armor that can give you what you need in order to defeat the enemy. So he says this. He says, uh, put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. He says, put on the whole armor. So he says that twice in this particular setting. Put on the whole armor. So the armor we're going to talk about in a few moments, but he says, put it all on. 
Amen? And it, it is necessary for us to put on that whole armor. Thank you, Lord. Now, uh, he says, put on the whole armor of God. Who's the author of this armor? God. Whose armor is it? God's. And it's God's armor that is, is the only armor equipped to defeat the enemy, to defeat the devil who tries to get you to do evil, to get you to do wrong. Now notice, he says, put on the whole armor of God that you might be able to what? Stand against the wiles of the devil. That you might be able, that word stand there means to abide, to remain, amen? To, to last, because the devil He's coming as a roaring lion to try to move us away from our steadfastness with God, to tempt us to do evil. And like I said earlier, I talked about choices. You've got to be strong to make the right choice. You've got to be strong to resist the devil. Amen? Don't fool yourself. The devil has power, but he's not does not have enough uh, uh, the, the power to overcome God. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Now, he has enough power to uh, tempt you, to overcome you. when if, if you're trying to defeat him in your own strength and in your own might, uh, he, he has enough power to overcome you, but he does not have enough power to overcome God. Amen. So notice, he said, put on the whole armor of God. Now, when we're talking about armor, we're talking about protective clothing uh, with the ability to deflect and to absorb impact, you know, from, from, from shots of the enemy. In other words, God is telling you to do something so that you'll be equipped so when the enemy tries to throw a dart your way, when, when, when insults come to you, when, when thoughts of being unable to do what God has ordained you to do, you'll be able to deflect that. It, it'll bounce off of you. Thank you, Lord, my God. It won't penetrate. Uh, it, won't, it won't harm you. It won't hurt you. Amen? Hallelujah, my God. Hallelujah. Man, I'm getting excited here. Thank you, Lord. So, so you got to put on the whole armor. You got to put on God's armor. Thank you, Lord, to, to, to go against the weapons of your opponent. And the weapons here are described as the wiles of the devil, his schemes, his plots, his method of operation. Thank you, Lord. So, so, so the armor that we're going to talk about tonight uh, is, is talking about you being able to stand against what the enemy is trying to throw your way. It won't, it, won't, it won't harm you. It won't hurt you. It won't stop you from moving forward in the Lord if you've got the whole armor on. Amen? You've got to have the whole armor on. All right? Now, notice what he says. He says, put on the whole armor of God that you might be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. All right? Now, notice the next verse. He says, for we wrestle not, and that word wrestle there means hand-to-hand -hand combat. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. My fight is not against people, but it's against principalities, powers, against rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Notice he says, wherefore take unto you, there he says again in verse 13, the whole armor, he's repeating it, Take on the whole armor uh, of God that you may be able, then he uses another word to, uh, he says stand up uh, in the first, in that, in that 12th verse, or that, that 11th verse, now he says be able to withstand, amen? And that withstand literally means when he's, the enemy is trying to hit you with a bunch of haymakers all at once. Thank you, Lord. You'll be able to uh, cover up and be able to withstand that and come out fighting. Thank you, Lord. You won't buckle under the pressure. You won't give in to what the enemy is trying to bring your way. 
you'll be able, by God's supernatural power, be able to withstand what the enemy is trying to uh, bring your way. Notice, he said, uh, be able to withstand, notice he said, in the evil day. The evil day is simply a day when the enemy is trying to overtake you. And in a, an evil day is a, simply a day when the enemy is trying to uh, 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 kill, steal, and to destroy your life. That's an evil day. Thank you, Lord. There's going to be a, a, a future evil days, future evil judgments. But for today's class, this evil day is now. Whenever you're going through something that the enemy is trying to take you out, uh, make you uh, get off of your steadfastness with God, make you doubt God, make you turn your back on God, that's an evil day. Anytime the enemy is trying to get you to steal, uh, get you to fornicate, lie, cheat, and steal, uh, curse God, that's an evil day. Hallelujah. And God is empowering us through this, his whole armor so that we'll be able to withstand those attacks. Oh, the enemy is shrewd. He's like, I, I, I liken him unto uh, uh, um, a merchant trying to get you to buy something online. And, and they always bombarding you with emails to, 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 to kind of catch you uh, uh, off guard. They send you an email every day hoping that this one particular day you're weak and then you'll buy their product. That's the same way with the enemy. His name is Diablos, meaning penetrator. He tries to penetrate your heart and, and, and get an opening in there where he can slip in and try to take control. Hallelujah. So you've got to be on guard 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And the only way to be on guard like that, you've got to operate in God's power. <laughs> Hey, glory. You got to have the power of God operating in your life. My Lord. Now notice what he said. Thank you, Jesus. He said um, that verse uh, 13, Wherefore take on the whole armor of God that you might be able to withstand in the evil day. And notice he says, Having done all to stand. Now, I want to say this before we get into that. That, that the armor, I want to be perfectly clear, the armor is God's protective clothing to, to shield you from the attacks of the enemy. And God wants you to be strong. He wants you to be empowered by him. Amen? Empowered for, by the Lord. Having God's strength. He's the source. Amen? And that power that he's referring to is, 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 is his dominion, his explosive power that you utilize, that we see with our own eyes. I can see God's power moving on you because something happened. There was an action. Hallelujah, that happened. When I, when I turn on my radio, I hit a power button and the radio comes on. Uh, when, you, when you turn on the light, you hit the power source, the, the light switch, uh, and, and the light comes on and actions happens. When, when God empowers us, he expects something to happen in your life. Hallelujah. He expects the enemy to be back up. He expects the enemy to, 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 to bow down to you. Thank you, Lord. He expects the way to be made and, and doors to be opened. Hallelujah. He expects something from you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Why? Because he's mighty. He's right there by your side to make it happen. It's not of your own strength. It's not of your own power. It's not of your own might. But it's the power and the strength and the might that is God dwelling on the inside of you through the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My God. So we see it in. So, so we must then... In order to, to, to operate in this power, Paul is saying, you've got to put on the whole armor of God. You've got to put on the whole armor of God to be able to stand, remain, abide. Uh, we have to live a, a crucified life. 
And Paul says, put on the whole armor of God because you have to be sanctified or crucified uh, in all areas of life. This armor that we're getting ready to talk about, if you put on the, the uh, take on all of its components, it literally covers your whole life. And the, the beauty of, of what Paul was saying was, if, you, if we were to go to uh, Thessalonians, I believe it is, chapter, what is it, chapter number five, and uh, yeah, chapter number five and verse number eight, Paul begins to develop, uh, I believe Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians is the, is the oldest uh, uh, epistle uh, in the New Testament. I believe that. But um, uh, Paul then begins this, this, this thought that, that's in his mind about the armor of God. Uh, but in Ephesians uh, chapter number 6, he brings out the whole revelation of the armor of God. And what he's saying is, if a child of God really takes time to, to grasp these concepts and put them in their lives, they will be uh, equipped for every attack of the enemy. They will be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. That's what Paul is saying. He's saying it's conclusive that if you do this, if you put on the whole armor, you shall be able to withstand and to stand every attack of the enemy. Hallelujah. That's a guarantee, a guarantee from the Lord. Isn't that worth doing? How many are tired of the, the devil kicking you in your teeth? How many are tired giving into your flesh and every wind of doctrine and things like that? You can be strong. You can be empowered wherein you can live a life of victory. You can live a life, hallelujah, that, that, that is reflective of the gifts and the callings of God upon you. So let us, let us dig deeper. Let us dig deeper into this. Paul says, put on the whole armor of God. Put on the whole armor of God. Uh, what verse we in? We in verse, uh, uh, verse, verse 14. He says, Having done all to stand, stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, having the bre on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, which is able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Verse 18, pray with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Now, I only have a little while to spend with you, but I want to leave this with you. He says, uh, this whole armor, when we talk about this armor, the armor consists of the following points of, of concentration for one to study. We got to study about this armor. When he says put on the whole armor, he's literally saying study these principles or these points that I'm giving you. Amen? In other words, equip your mind. Equip your mind with these points that I'm giving you. Amen? These points of doctrine. These points of, of salvation. These points of, of strength. He wants you to study them. Thank you, Lord. So he's saying, uh, uh, if you do this, then you'll be under the protection. You'll be under the protection of God and, and, and you'll be able to be strong. There's a scripture in the book of uh, Peter, uh, 2 Peter chapter number one. It says, grace and peace 
be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. This is how this armor works. When, when you get to know uh, and understand these principles that Paul is laying out, that's how you put on the whole armor and thereby you knowing these concepts, you'll be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Hallelujah. So notice what he says. The first one is, he talks about truth. Amen. He says, gird your loins about with what? Truth. And here he's talking about, you've got to study and know everything that's truthful about Jesus Christ. This whole armor deals with Jesus. Amen. And everything about Jesus. Thank you, Lord. So he's saying that the truth that is taught by Jesus, you've got to know what it is. And you got to know what Jesus' calling is. you got to know what the hope of his calling is. Amen? And you've got to know what the purpose of the manifestation of Jesus Christ is. That's truth. Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Amen? Free from the error, free from the lies, and free from everything else. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. He said, no man cometh unto the Father but by me. Thank you, Lord. So, so when Paul says uh, a girdle is used for support, amen? So truth is going to support you. You've got to hide truth in your heart, in your mind. And that means you've got to do an in-depth study about Jesus, his purpose, his calling, his power, everything that relates to him, his teaching, his doctrine, what he has said. Thank you, Lord. And I said earlier that what I'm talking about today, that whole armor, is not a one-time shot. It's an ongoing process. Every time you get up, you read something about Jesus, you're putting on the armor. Every time you get up you and, and go to bed, thank you, Lord, you read in that word, study and meditate in that word, you're putting on more armor. Amen? So people who don't study the word aren't putting on the armor. But people who do study God's word and meditate in that word, they're putting on the armor. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. They're growing in grace. They're growing in knowledge. Amen? Hallelujah. So if you don't study, if you don't read, you're not getting on the armor. You're not putting it on. Amen? You're not putting it on. You're not taking it. You're not putting it on when you don't read, when you don't study. Let me ask you a question. When's the last time you read the Bible? When is the last time you spent time in the Word of God? If you have not spent any time in the word of God, you're not strong in the Lord. You're not strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Let me say this. Thank you, Lord. You, this, I love to worship. I love to praise God. But you worshiping and praising God is not you putting on the armor. You cannot be strong just by listening to gospel music and, and playing worship songs and, and call yourself. Oh my Lord, I'm, I'm getting a little bit beside myself. Now y'all forgive me. But 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 that ain't that ain't getting strong. Me saying hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. And I never get into the word. I never seek God the way he wants me to seek him in his word. I'm never gaining a knowledge and understanding and wisdom. 